Hi, this is Jeannie Alcott. Did you know that you can have Word of Power teachings coming into your home every month? Just think of the power of that. God's Word coming into you and changing the conditions and circumstances. He can do so much when you hear that Word of Power. So just request to be a part of our program where you receive four CDs each month. This is for a pledge of $30 or more each month into this ministry. So request those today and believe for miracles for your life. God bless you. Welcome to Word of Power. Jeannie and John Alcott are honored to have you be a part of this powerful time with God. We believe He connected you with us to hear this word. You can be empowered and blessed during this time. So allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart in a personal way. Then believe for miracles. At the end of the broadcast, be sure to share your needs and desires with Jeannie and John for personal prayer. Now, listen for a word of power for your life. It's so good that you're joining me. This is Jeannie Alcott. In this message, God is showing us how we can face tomorrow when it's difficult to face it. He is in our tomorrow, and He will always be there to direct us and show us the good things that are planned. You know, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, that's a verse that's quoted often, and that's because it's filled with so much hope about our tomorrow. God says in it, For I know the plans I have for you, plans for well-being and not for trouble, to give you a future and a hope. In other words, everything appears good for tomorrow. That's good news. But what about when something doesn't turn out as expected today? You thought you knew the plan of God and you were hopeful, but the circumstances didn't turn out the right way. This doesn't seem to be going according to your plans. And that makes it hard to face tomorrow because what is there to look forward to? That is when you have to trust God's intentions. You can't see Him working and fulfilling the promise He's given you. But you can trust that His intentions are to give you well-being, not trouble, a good future, and hope. In spite of the circumstances not going as expected, there are times that He may be showing you a different way that He's going to accomplish His plan. And that's when you have to accept a new purpose. There is a reason He's redirecting your tomorrow. And in order to experience it, you have to trust Him enough to accept that new purpose that He set up concerning your desire. Remember, His intent is for your well-being and peace and fulfillment. You can trust His plan for tomorrow in spite of how things turned out today. There was a man who had to come to that point, the place where he would trust the plan of God before he could be content and happy. Otherwise, he was going to be miserable in every tomorrow he faced. It happened when he felt that he was supposed to be a missionary. That was the dream of his heart. So he began to pray for God to open the door for him to serve in missions. He even took steps to enter into the process of being sponsored by a missionary organization. But when he got to the examining board, after the process was over, the board turned him down. He did not meet the qualifications. Well, that didn't turn out the way he expected. You know how it is when an event throws you for a loop. Your thoughts are going crazy trying to figure out what's going on. Did you miss it or did someone else? Is this an act of the devil or is this how things are supposed to be? You thought your health would turn around when you did this, but it hasn't. You were sure this was the person you were supposed to be friends with, but it isn't working out. When you applied for that job, you were almost sure it was the one, but you didn't receive the offer. There are so many big and everyday types of events that happen, and they just don't go according to plan. So how do you face tomorrow? You begin to wonder what God's plans are. That's what this man was wondering. But as he went to God with his unfulfilled expectation, he was shown a new purpose. And when he accepted that new purpose, that unfulfilled expectation became a great expectation, one which turned into a greater answer than he could have imagined. God moved on him to become a pastor and build a church. So instead of going himself as a missionary, he would have a much greater impact by using this church to send out many missionaries. What he could have done by himself turned into a multiplication of missions work being done in many nations. In fact, at the time, he sent out more missionaries than any other church did. Sometimes our tomorrow has a new purpose in it, but we can trust that to God because we can trust his intention for our life. He intends a good tomorrow, not one full of trouble, but full of hope and goodness. 
That's how we can face tomorrow when things don't turn out as we expected, because we can trust that God has a new purpose and it will be good and fulfilling and meet our need. We just have to get over the hump of what our emotions are doing during that time. We may have to grapple with disappointment or fear or a sense of hopelessness. Sometimes it's hard to get over those emotions because we're still thinking about what could have been, but it isn't. That's where the man Samuel was in the Bible. He just could not get over the hump of his emotion of mourning about what could have been. As a prophet, he had anointed the man Saul to be the first king of Israel, but things didn't turn out as he expected, and it felt as if it was more than he could handle. Oh, but when we're at the place when something seems to be more than we can handle and we don't think we can face tomorrow, God comes in with his strength and understanding and gives us something new to put in our heart, something that gives us hope. It was hard on Samuel during this time because when he anointed Saul, everybody was rejoicing and celebrating. They had their first king and he was impressive and he won the favor of the people. But after he'd been king for a while, he decided he knew better than God about the timing of when things should be done. So he stepped out of God's timing and disobeyed. And that's when Samuel had to come and give him the bad news. You know, sometimes the prophet has to give a hard word. So because Saul had turned his back on God and usurped his authority, he would no more be accepted as king. God was going to put someone else in his place. So Samuel delivered that message. Then he went back to his home in Gibeah. Once he was there, he just sat and grieved. All the expectations he had for Saul fulfilling God's will were broken. Here he had anointed him, and now this huge disappointment. It's hard for us to get our thinking past all those questions rolling around inside us. Sometimes God has to come to us and pull us out of that downtime. He comes to show us that he has something new in which we need to enter. Pull our head up and start looking toward tomorrow. Because in our tomorrow, he has planned our well-being and a good future. And once we accept that new purpose, we'll see what his intent is and how good conditions can become now. So as Samuel was in this down moment, God came to him and showed him a new purpose. He spoke to him and said, How long will you be filled with sorrow because of Saul, since I have turned away from him being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen a king for myself among his sons. He was saying, Samuel, it's time now for you to stop mourning over what could have been. It didn't work out, so I have rejected Saul from being king anymore. Now accept it and get up and walk into the new purpose I have. There's a special person I've prepared for you to go to and anoint as the new king. I've chosen him for myself. So I want you to fill your horn with oil and go anoint him. I have a special work for you to do, Samuel, and I can't afford to have you sitting around moping when there's work to be done. So Samuel received the new purpose. He got up, set his emotions aside, and faced tomorrow. He knew God could take care of what didn't go right, and the days ahead would be better. And that's how we can face tomorrow, because we know God will handle what didn't go right, and the future will be better filled with hope. Samuel went to the house of Jesse and he paraded every son in front of the prophet. And each time Samuel thought this would be the one, but God said no. And when he said no to all of them, Samuel became confused. He had done what God said. He came to the house of Jesse to anoint one of his sons as king, but God hadn't chosen any of them to be in the position. So out of desperation, Samuel asked Jesse, is this all? Are there no more sons? And Jesse responded that he did have one more, but he was the runt of the family, so he was out tending the sheep. Samuel ordered Jesse to go get him. He wasn't going to move from that spot until he saw the last one. As soon as Jesse brought in David, God said to Samuel, Up on your feet, anoint him, this is the one. Samuel took his oil and anointed David, and the Spirit of God entered David as a rush of wind. He was empowered to fulfill his position and purpose for the rest of his days. We know that David became a great king, and God even referred to him this way, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will and carry out my program fully. In other words, he wasn't as Saul was. David was going to do what God desired for him to do. So when he became king, even when he made mistakes, he always turned back to God. He asked forgiveness and did what God wanted. 
whereas Saul defended his wrong acts instead of confessing them and surrendering to God. So David succeeded as king, and Samuel succeeded as the prophet, all because he got up from his discouragement when things didn't turn out the way he desired, and he accepted God's new purpose. In other words, he walked into tomorrow trusting God. That's when he saw the plan unfold for a good future. Oh, when it seems hard to adjust to what hasn't gone our way, if we will accept God's way, that's when we'll see the plan unfold. The good future will come into being. So if something right now isn't going the way you expected, raise your eyes to God. Know that you can face tomorrow because He has a good plan for your days ahead. And as you accept that, you can enter into those and see your desire fulfilled. All right, we're going into a powerful time of prayer. Join me with your faith. Oh, Father, we have to admit there are times we don't understand. Events don't go the way we expected, and it's hard not to mope around and be discouraged. But we know that's why you're coming to my dear friend at this moment. You're putting your hand under their chin and you're raising their head up because you have something new to show them, a new purpose. Your intentions are good toward them and you have wonderful plans ahead so they can face tomorrow with excitement and anticipation and be healed in their emotions and mind. I pray that you send that to them now, all of the restoration and newness. Give them a sense of what is to come. It will meet the need, be fulfilling. Oh, it's going to be much better than what they're facing today. Yes, their tomorrow is much better than what they're facing now. So their spirit will become light and joyful. You are speaking to them and giving them the word of hope. So we praise you for it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Right now, God is coming to you and encouraging you to look forward to what he's doing. Trust the intention of his heart. It's good. He has wonderful purposes to show you. And he's called us to help you walk into those, to minister to you and pray for you. So John and I encourage you to share with us what hasn't gone the way you expected. We want to write to you and give you some words that can help you sense the heart of God during this time and what kind of tomorrow is facing you. We're going to pray and intercede as soon as we hear from you, so be sure to contact us soon. Now until then, go around expressing this spiritual power line and believe it from your heart. Go around saying, I can face tomorrow. I can face tomorrow. And you can because you know God has your tomorrows filled with hope and goodness. And to help you face tomorrow, be sure you get this message. We'll send you the five parts of the teaching. They're each 15 minutes. And you'll also receive the prayer times. Just ask for, you can face tomorrow. It's offer number AM717, that's 717. You can have a CD of it for a gift of $8 into the ministry. Or you can download it for a gift of $5. Just go to alcopministries.org. I look forward to being with you tomorrow. You can face tomorrow. Be sure and hear this message. This is Jeannie Alcott. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Jeannie and John encourage you to take this opportunity to receive personal prayer. When you contact them, they will lay hands on what you share and pray with faith. Then send you a letter filled with God's Word for your life. You can write to Alcott Ministries, Post Office Box 3400, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013, or call 918-459-9191. You can also receive ministry and request items through our website at alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries.org. There you can also listen to Word of Power broadcasts. Now be sure to request this teaching. And Jeannie and John ask you to join them in giving a gift today to be a part of this great work for God. Don't miss the next Word of Power for you.